Hi guys, I'm Lawrence Mann and welcome to my first Patreon. Let's have a look at turning this simple line art sketch into a more complex mono black and white concept piece that we can then move on to colour and render fully. <laughs> So as you can see, at first this is just a really, really quick, simple sketch. You know, it's just something I had in my mind after looking around at a few different images online and, you know, just something I've been wanting to draw for a while. So, yeah, so I just started scribbling away and they're basically, there's just a lot of rough shapes in there. Some of it is just scribbly lines that a while from now I wouldn't even be able to tell what they are. So, the first thing we have to do is really pad this out. So, I've taken the liberty already of uh, cleaning this up somewhat and adding a little more detail to it. So, as you can see already, we've got the armour and everything going on. I've changed the hair, I've changed the face. You know, I've added a lot more detail. And that's something that, you know, it's quite easy to do once you've got the basic pose sketch down and you're happy with that. But here's how we turn it into a nice padded out, filled mono image, which we'll then work on in colour afterwards. And it's a question that comes up quite a lot, is how do you turn a mono image into a colour image? Or how do you, you know, how do you paint on top of black and white? So, first thing I like to do is I like to make my background into a grey tone. Specifically, it doesn't have to be a certain type of, a certain colour of grey. Really, the one thing to think about is how, how dark is your final image going to be? If it's going to be very dark, then go for a very dark grey. If it's going to be a very light image, then maybe stay with a lighter grey. I just prefer not to work on white. Sometimes I will work on black or near black, so I can still see my sketch. But, yeah, a lot of the time, it's this kind of mid-level grey, slightly lighter, I'd say. Next thing I'm going to do is, as you can see here, I'm already doing it. On a new layer, you know, I leave my sketch layer completely alone. On a new layer, I'm simply just going in and adding some shade and some tone. And this is just Photoshop's standard brush here at work. And it's nice and quick and it's nice and simple. And I'm not trying to be overly neat with this. I'm just trying to work out in my head the lighting. Now, this early stage of the illustration is, in fact, you know, people think you can be quite quick and quite brash with uh, this part of the illustration. But it's actually the most important part of the illustration because this is where the major decisions are made. This is where you decide where your lighting's coming from. It's okay to say, hey, we'll just, you know, colour all the hair in a darker colour as I'm doing right here. But you're also going to be deciding which direction your lighting's colour coming from, exactly how much lighting there is, you might even add in overall tones on things like hair. So I've already decided that she's got dark hair. She's not a blonde. Yeah, there's quite a lot to go through. Realistically, like I say, these early stages are really, really important. Just like with your initial sketch, you know, that's worth time spent getting the anatomy correct. You know, it's harder to correct that later on. It's harder to correct lighting changes later on as well. The main thing is really, I just need to carry on with this for now. Add in all the tones and highlights where I think they're best suited. As you can see, what I've done here in this file is I've actually colored certain things on one layer, such as the hair, and I'm moving on to shading on a different layer altogether now. Now, I could have done this all on the same layer, but just for comfort's sake, 
just in case I do decide to change her back to being a blonde or something like that. I don't know. Better to work on separate layers. So yeah, for right now, we'll just keep it like this. That would be fine. But for... For everyday purposes, it's always better to... You know, if you're not 100% sure about something, do it on another layer. And no matter what program you're using, you know, hopefully you're using one with a, a layers facility. So yeah, that should be fine. As you can see, I'm adding in shadows for everywhere. And it's really, you know, it's really easy at this point because if I was doing this with color, I would have to be specifically changing the color for every area. You know, the gold on the small brown leather belts and uh, the the gold plating and the sword, different color in the armor. I'd have to choose all of those colors individually or pick them from around the painting. But at this stage, I'm just using gray. So I can just, you know, use one brush, one tone of gray and just go around the entire painting. And obviously, because I'm using a drawing tablet, I have pressure sensitivity. So the harder I press down, the darker it is. Different brushes can do different things and you can set those up. I like my paintings to have a certain quality about them. I like them to feel a certain way. So I always, I always typically, I, I don't want them to look like photographs. So I, I like to use a brush with a, a harder edge when I start at this level. I don't, I don't want everything to look too soft. If I'm doing a quick sketch, I might do it in a really soft brush, but I find for clarity's sake, for definition of an, on a character, it's better off earlier on to start with a harder brush and then blend edges together when you need to, rather than do something really soft and then add the sharp detail. And I think looking around at more... I don't want to say amateur art, but yeah, amateur art. Um, one thing I noticed is that there are a lot of soft brushes in use. Not many hard brushes. So, you know, this is just my theory on this. You know, there are many other theories out there. But if you like what I'm doing, then hey. Now, I'm adding a lot more darker tone around the bottom here, but that's because I don't want this to be a central focal point. Obviously her face and the sword, etc., will be the focal point. I'll talk about that later on, but uh, yeah. It's coming along nicely, and I think it, it's working really well, but I can also start to add tone onto the hair now because that's on a, a layer behind. I can make her hair darker. I could go for a more raven colour rather than just a brown. You can see how that, that really works there when I turn the layers on and off. You can see the differences there between all of those. So it's looking quite good already. The next thing I want to do is just add on some highlights. Now this is where, for me, it really starts to jump out, um, particularly in terms of where the lighting's coming from. Shadow, it could be multiple sources you're always going to have certain places are always going to be darker that's guaranteed almost no matter where the lighting's come from unless you're having it from a really weird angle but the highlights yeah this is in my mind this is where you define the image now I always like to have my lighting come from the top corner, the upper right hand corner of the of the image. I think that's just my it's nothing specific, it's just my kind of relaxed fallback lighting position. If there's something in the image that's given off lighting, then obviously that's where the light's coming from. But if it's a piece like this with a nondescript background, 
then my lighting always seems to come from top right. Why? I think if you have a fallback like this in place, no matter where you are in the image, no matter how you're moving it around, no matter how you've rotated your canvas, no matter how you've zoomed in and out, you always know at the back of your mind where that light's coming from. And that can be kind of nice. So if you're if you're doing a piece just for fun, you don't have to think about it constantly. Or maybe if you're a new artist, if you're not that experienced, it's nice to have that to, to constantly fall back on. I'm not saying it's something everybody should do, but it's just something that I've noticed that I do. And there is a reason for it. I'm just adding in some highlights here on the um, armor. Now, this is something else, like I say, about working out, you know, the early stages of the painting. This armor, originally I did, I did consider this to be leather armor. But then I did think maybe because I've changed the hair since the original sketch, I did think, is she looking a bit too Xena? If I give a kind of leather armor. So, I've made the reflections on the armor a bit harsher. Just a tiny bit. Because I'm going to make it metallic. Now I'm adding in highlights in the hair. Hair is always an odd one because when you do it in mono like this, um, Typically, I'll always go back and change a lot of it anyway. As a lot of blending goes on. So I'm not too upset about making the hair very, very neat and tidy with my strokes. Because I'll do a lot of blending to make the hair move in a certain way. Painter and Photoshop. And some other apps as well have some great blending brushes. So, yeah. It's one of those things you have to keep it in mind. But at this early stage, as long as I know what I'm doing with the hair, then I don't have to worry about it. At this point, I can concentrate on just working out the planning stages. Like, I know now I'm, I'm working on this bit under the arm. And it all looks good. And I can kind of envision how the finished piece is going to be. And I know a lot of people will want to jump into the finished colour version straight away. And I think doing this with the black and white definitely helps you kind of plan out what you actually want to do and find the pitfalls of your image. Find what's wrong with it. Now the strange thing is when I record a video like this typically it's not exactly how I paint when I'm just doing a commission piece or if I'm just painting for myself because when you record for YouTube you you try and make it a bit more viewer friendly so for example I'm not zooming in and out a lot because I, I think that drives people crazy and rotating my canvas a lot I recorded this, you know, as well with my camera. So it meant I had to sit in a very particular way. And I, it meant that I didn't rotate my Wacom. You know, so it was very uh, rigid in that structure. So there's a lot that changes when you're, when you're actually painting for, painting for an audience. But, you know, it's kind of cool as well. Now, on a completely new layer here, what you can see me doing is I'm actually just giving the character a white outline. I do this quite a lot, especially for quicker sketches. Um, not normally for finished pieces. I do find, the reason I'm doing it on this one is because I do find it can be incredibly useful. 
it really helps define a character. You know, it really helps a character stand out. Now, I'm not giving her anything special in the background. I'm just going to give her a, kind of a bang, bright color, pow background. And what I might do is I might actually put the light source behind her as well. Might be kind of cool. And in that case, you would have this kind of halo. So that means I can paint the, the, the light around the hands and around the edge of the sword here that I really want to make stand out. You know, so it's me just planning again. This white line around the edge can also come back and kick you in the ass later on. It can be a bit of a problem. But then again, it can also be a lot of fun. You know, it's one of these things. The good thing is, it's on another layer and I can always experiment with it. But yeah, it's it's just a case of having a little bit of fun with it. But you can see the difference between her arm at the bottom and her other arm at the top and the difference between how they now stand out. And it really, really works. It is more of um more of a comic book, maybe an anime look. I don't mind it. I think it's quite nice. I quite like it. I think it works really well on quick paintings. I think if if you blend it right, when you get down to the final detail, if I turn this into a full painting, and then I blended that correctly, it can work superbly. But it's one of those things I can always trace my way back through the layers and turn it off. And you see, I am having to rotate my canvas here, because just doing that curve around the top of the hair kill me. You know, I just don't get as nice a line unless I rotate the canvas. And it's easy. But I'm not zoomed in all the way. And I haven't gone, you know, crazy with that. So these few lines I'll just polish off with my canvas nicely rotated here. But this hair, it's a bit chunky at the bottom here. And I will come around and fix all that later on. I'm not too worried about that at the moment. So that looks great so far. I'm kind of happy with that. I think the next thing to do is actually add in something a bit more in the background. I'm going to use an actual gradient layer for that. I could just do that with a brush as well. I could just use a massive brush. And sometimes I do that and sometimes I use a gradient layer. There's no giant difference between the two. It's just personal preference. This time though, I'm also going to use this kind of mask layer on my gradient fill, because I'm a good boy and I'm doing it properly. This is the real way that I should do it every time. I don't do it this way every time, but this is the way I should do it every time. Why don't I? It's not the quickest way. The quickest way is just to use a big brush. This way is kind of fun. It just takes a bit longer. When I started in Photoshop, you know, we didn't have all these cool toys like this. And, you know, when they came in, we never started using them properly. And now they're considered, like, you know, really old hat. <laughs> but, yeah, to me, it's still like, oh, look, a, a layer mask. Ooh. And another new layer, and I'm just adding in some more shading and detailing. And I can just retouch any bits that aren't, that I'm not completely happy with. You know, this nose isn't perfect. I can also do this later on, you know, in the color stages. And I'm sure at that point I will change her face again. I always do. But, you know... It's one of those things you just keep tweaking and tweaking and tweaking along the way and as you go. Um, you know, I'm going to add detail onto the armor. I'm going to add detail into the hair, the sword, everything. I, I always like to add lots of nice little detail touches to my images. You can tell here that it's still just a sketch. Just by going along continuously drawing, we just get a little bit more detail every time. And that's how you 
come up with a great painting, you just keep going and keep going and keep going until it's done. There is no amount of time you should spend on a painting. You just keep it going. So this is this is quite simple. And you can see how already that initial sketch at the beginning of this video, that was just a few lines on a page. But now this is, you know, this is completely different. This feels really filled out. It feels like we could just lay colour over this now and it would look a lot better. It'd still be just a colour sketch though. We have to work on that to make it a lot better. But I think it's one of those things where as long as as long as you work on it, as long as you keep painting and getting it better, it will be perfect. But before you add colour, before you go to those extremes, it's best to keep working on it as a black and white image and get it as near as you think you can before you add colour. Like, for instance, here, I could have just gone and added the colour straight away. But I know that these will not match. The The shading on these elements here are the same as the shading on the elements on her, as the same as the shading on her leg, and I don't want that. So, yeah, I'm just going to, you know, quickly just delete these, scrub them out, I could do it with a selection tool or something, but I don't like using the selection tool to delete because it's just a bit rough and ready. But I can just, you know, scrub these out and then I can repaint them or I could even leave them white. The point is just to keep drawing, get this level of it right, get this looking as good as I can, and then, then add the colour after that. All the elements I'm adding in now, like the fur around the uh, warrior's cuff, they're clearly going to be more of a white colour anyway. The eyes may be a bit too white there, but we'll fix that later on. And you can see how much better that looks now. Just by adding that layer of white in over the top, that scrubbed out layer of white. And then just a fresh layer over the top with some highlights in. There we go. And that really that really just makes the key focal points of the image now really jump out. Her face, her hand, her sword. Maybe a little on the patootie and the shoulder pad there as well. But mainly, yeah, maybe the mainly the face and the sword leading down to the bottom hand. And for a black and white sketch, I'm happy with that. So I'll just give it my final little signature. Seeing as this is the, the first video here. It looks good. This is my normal signature that I just doodle quickly all the time. Not the same signature I use on my final pieces, but And this is uh, this is the last thing you will see from 2016. Everything else will be next year. This year, if you're viewing it in the future. There you go. There are all the layers. That looks very cool. And I hope you enjoyed this. There's obviously more videos from this, my free trial Patreon. Hope you enjoyed this. And I shall see you very, very soon.